So it's a show? It's a lifestyle. It's a religion. Upon your guys' request, we're going to be tackling Gilmore Girls today. A show with more food scenes than you can count. I picked five recipes to recreate today, all super yummy and very junky. This whole video is like a contradiction in itself because neither Lorelai nor Rory uh, would ever decide to make any of these foods themselves. Their diet is essentially made up of takeout and candy, so that's what these ideas are going to be like too, but made vegan, which doesn't make it much healthier. This first idea is for homemade Pop-Tarts, inspired by this little one-shot getting ready sequence from season one. In a large mixing bowl, combine all the dry ingredients, all-purpose flour, salt, and powdered sugar. Next up, add cold vegan butter that was cut into smaller pieces beforehand, a couple tablespoons of unsweetened applesauce, and vanilla. Mix it all up with a spoon first, then switch to your hands. While you're doing that, add the non-dairy milk one tablespoon at a time. Keep up with this kneading motion until you're able to form one big ball of dough. What helps is dumping the mix onto your surface. Wrap it up in some parchment paper and place it into the fridge for about an hour. In the meantime, make the filling. Grab some frozen berries or frozen cherries and add those to a small saucepan. Let them defrost for a couple minutes on medium heat while you stir frequently. Combine a teaspoon of cornstarch with a splash of non-dairy milk. Then add the cornstarch mix to the cherries and mix everything up. Let it simmer for another three to four minutes until it looks something like this. Take the dough out of the fridge and roll it out until it is about a third of a centimeter in thickness. Cut off the sides so it has a rectangular shape. Now take a ruler and measure out five centimeters times eight centimeters. I think that's two inches times three inches and a tiny bit more. Google that. I haven't used one of these things in a long time. What's Geodreieck in English? Make sure you have an even number of rectangles and lay out half of these on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Less is more when it comes to adding the filling. About a teaspoon per tart should suffice. Top each one with a second rectangular piece, then press down the sides using a fork to create the, the typical Pop-Tart look. Don't forget to add the little holes as well. The leftover dough that was cut away earlier can still be rolled out one more time, so same thing, add the cherry mix, then the second piece of dough, and seal them with the fork. Place these into the fridge for 15 to 20 minutes so they can firm up a bit again. In the meantime, preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius and then bake your Pop-Tarts until golden brown for 18 to 20 minutes. As they're cooling, feel free to make some frosting. Mix together a third of a cup of powdered sugar and a few teaspoons of non-dairy milk. The last thing to make the Pop-Tart look complete uh, would be sprinkles. Trying to find vegan sprinkles is always an adventure. These were the only ones I could find at Edeka. I didn't want any hearts though, so I decided to just crush them using a really bad knife as best as I could. Moving on to recipe number two, a vegan pepperoni pizza. I will have my original pizza recipe in the description. That one's great too. There might be some additional helpful information in there. To a large mixing bowl, add some water at room temperature, a little bit of sugar, and some active dry yeast. Let this sit for about 10 minutes while you combine the dry ingredients. Some regular all-purpose flour, whole wheat flour, and salt. 
Combine the wet and the dry. Mix it up with a wooden spoon first till it roughly comes together. Then go in with your hands. Knead the dough for two to three minutes and then place it back into the bowl and let it sit in the fridge for 20 to 24 hours. It's a long time, I know. You can of course just use pre-made pizza dough if you don't want to wait as long. First, we're gonna be working on the cheese sauce. In a small saucepan, melt down a tablespoon of vegan butter on medium-high heat. Once melted, add a tablespoon of cornstarch and mix it in vigorously so the starch doesn't form any clumps. Then pour in some soy or oat cream or just some non-dairy milk. Keep mixing. Add two handfuls of vegan pizza cheese, white wine vinegar, nutritional yeast, soy sauce, and salt to taste. Let it simmer on medium heat for another three to five minutes or until it turns into a creamy, almost pudding-like consistency. For a healthier alternative, once again, check out my original pizza recipe. There I made the cheese from cashews and potatoes. For the typical pepperoni pizza look, you need some vegan salami slices. I cut those into little tiny circles using a baby bottle. Here's another uh, language thing I'm curious about. In Germany, when you order a pepperoni pizza, you would get these little mildly spicy peppers on your pizza and not meat. Why is it called that in America? And what do you call those peppers? I would love to know. Make sure to get some pizza or marinara sauce ready, so store-bought or made from scratch. Also, lightly grease a baking sheet. Take the dough out of the fridge and now decide whether you want one big pizza or two small ones. I have found that the small ones are easier to shape and therefore turn out to have a thinner, crispier crust. Preheat the oven to 240 degrees Celsius. Now it's time to build the pizza. On a floured surface, knead the dough again for a minute or two to warm it up a bit. If it's sticky, oil your hands with like a teaspoon of oil. If you want to make the small pizzas, cut the dough in half. Begin by slowly stretching out the dough. I think technically you're supposed to pass the dough over your knuckles, like so. Um, I'm not very good at that, so I just do this motion. Spread some marinara sauce onto your pizza, followed by a few tablespoons of the cheese sauce. And then the vegan meat. Bake the small pizza for 10 to 12 minutes. Bake the big one for 15 to 20 minutes until it looks something like this. Obviously, this is not gonna taste exactly like a non-vegan pizza, but still just as yummy. Mine sort of ended up tasting like biting into a lasagna, which I'm fine with. Moving on to one of my personal favorite moments from the show, or from, from what I've seen. So far, I've only watched a little over three seasons. But I'm talking about that episode where Rory is alone for the night, uh, Jess comes over to drop off an insane amount of food. The girl from How to Get Away with Murder is also there, Paris, and uh, Rory is worried about her boyfriend coming over to find Jess there. Paris gets very much excited about having the opportunity to eat mac and cheese, so we're gonna make those real quick. Cook up some shortcut pasta. The sauce is basically made the same way as the pizza, the pizza, the pizza cheese. Melting some vegan butter on medium high, mixing in cornstarch, and then instead of soy cream, I used soy milk here. Then I added once again vegan cheese that melts, white wine vinegar, salt to taste, turmeric powder for the yellowiness, and some black pepper. Make sure to adjust any flavors if needed. Then 
There was a restaurant in Berlin I used to love going to for mac and cheese. It was called Let It Be. I'm speaking in past tense because it closed down like over a year ago, unfortunately, but this tastes pretty much exactly like theirs. I remember they would always serve their pasta with extra vegan cheese and spring onion, which I did here as well. It fits so nicely. This is so good. Back to the scene. I don't know why Rory and Paris are eating their fries so weird. But anyway, for this next recipe, we're gonna be making super crispy oven baked steak type fries. Grab some yellow potatoes, wash them and cut them in half first, then into long wedges. Transfer the potatoes to a large bowl and cover them with hot boiling water. Let this sit for like 15 minutes. In the meantime, preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius and lightly grease two baking sheets with vegetable oil. Drain the potatoes and get them as dry as possible afterwards using paper towels. Put them into a large, dry mixing bowl. Add like a tablespoon of extra oil, some salt, and mix it up. Divide the potatoes between the two baking sheets. Make sure they're all in one even layer. Each fry has to have a little bit of space. Um, then put the sheets into the oven and let them bake for a total of 30 minutes. The sheet on the lower rack is obviously going to take a bit longer. Um, yeah, leave it in there for like an extra 5 minutes or so. Flip them halfway through. Be careful when you do that though. It's also enough to just move them around a little bit and loosen them up. And that's about it. Hit them with some more salt and spices of your choice after baking them and serve them immediately. If you want to plate them up like they do in the show, you could make Jess's salt and pepper dip. I assume it's just mayonnaise, vegan mayonnaise in my case, with extra salt and pepper. Um, I also added white wine vinegar. And as mentioned in the scene, Hot sauce should also be consumed with the fries. This final recipe is definitely the most loosely inspired by the show, but it's one you should definitely try if you get the chance. These are marshmallow and coffee cookies. When Rory goes off to college, Lorelai brings her some baked goods, including marshmallow cookies Suki had made. I feel like a video on Gilmore Girls wouldn't be complete without using coffee in some way. Um, so that's why marshmallow and coffee. First, melt down some vegan butter. While that's happening, mix together your dry ingredients. Flour, salt, and baking powder. To a separate bowl, add raw sugar, vanilla, unsweetened applesauce, the melted vegan butter, and coffee. I'm not very skilled in the coffee making department. This is just what was left over from my parents' breakfast. Mix it up using a hand mixer. This kind of looks like a sad attempt at making that one TikTok coffee. Add the flour and stuff um, and mix it all up with a wooden spoon. Lastly, add some vegan mini marshmallows. The ones that I'm using here are from Trader Joe's. My friend Emily sent me those for Christmas, um, but I am pretty sure you can find some vegan ones in Germany as well, in some wild organic stores, online for sure. Definitely the Vegans store in Berlin has them. If you can only find big ones, make sure to cut them into mini marshmallows. Place this bowl into the fridge for about 30 minutes. In the meantime, line a baking sheet with parchment paper and preheat the oven to 200 degrees Celsius. Take the cookie dough out of the fridge. One heaping tablespoon equals one cookie. It should be enough for about 12 of those. Place them into the oven for 18 to 22 minutes. These are so good. They're crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. Even without the marshmallows, they're great, so adding them is not essential. 
Cool, and that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what recipe you think you're gonna try. Feel free to post a photo of your recreation on Instagram and tag me in it. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you have a good rest of your day, night, whenever you choose to watch this. Talk to you soon. Bye. When I lost my mind,